Hello and welcome to this American Heart Association Go Red Talk, presented by Yale New Haven Health. I'm Dr. Eric Velasquez, the physician in chief of the Heart and Vascular Center at Yale New Haven Health, and the Robert W. Berliner and chief of cardiovascular medicine at Yale University. Our vision here at Yale New Haven Health is to enhance the lives of the people and communities we serve. It's a part of our mission to create healthier communities. Working with the AHA, we have created a series of talks around health equity and wellness topics aimed at helping you that will help you live a longer and stronger life. We hope that you find these talks informative. Now I would like to introduce today's presenters who will discuss the intersection of health equity and cardiovascular medicine. Please welcome Dr. Yeri Anuma of the Heart and Vascular Center at Yale New Haven Health and an assistant professor at Yale School of Medicine, as well as Dr. Erica Spatz, also of the Heart and Vascular Center at Yale New Haven Hospital and an associate professor at Yale School of Medicine. Hi, I'm so glad to be with, here, with you here today, Dr. Anuma. Nice to see you. Thank you so much, Dr. Spatz. Uh, looking forward to our discussion today. So today we're talking about health equity, something that I know you and I care deeply about. And I thought it would be helpful to start with the problem uh, that really goes to the significant disparities that we see in outcomes, including life expectancy, cardiovascular disease at both the national and the local level. This is a map of the United States showing life expectancy. And you can see that, uh, that the red dots reflect a very low life expectancy actually around 55 to the early 70s, where communities and patient, uh, people in these communities are not living very long, all the way to the blue where the people are living into their 80s. And the thing about this map is that this is not just geographic differences. These geographic locations reflect uh, communities that are more economically disadvantaged as well as racially diverse communities. And so our underserved populations are actually living shorter lives. And we see this reflected in cardiovascular disease, including myocardial infarction. When we compare 1999 to 2011, you can see that we've made enormous strides in reducing the rates of myocardial infarction reflected by the green on the map. But yet still there are several communities that are trailing behind reflected in the red. And again, these are communities with the most economically uh, uh, challenged populations. And they also happen to be communities with large populations of Black and Latino uh, individuals. Uh, this map also looks the same for congestive heart failure, as well as for stroke. So we have significant disparities in pretty much all cardiovascular outcomes. And it's also reflected in the cardiovascular risk factors of these populations with hypertension being the most uh, potent risk factor for cardiovascular outcomes. As you can see, there are significant disparities in the prevalence of hypertension where it affects uh, black men and women significantly more so than white populations. In addition, hypertension control is also significantly worse in uh, black adults. And for many of these uh, uh, disparities, we really have to go a lot deeper, Dr. Anuma, to talk about the why, why does this exist? You know, we see this locally, we see this in our patients every single day. These are maps of uh, New Haven County on the left showing hypertension hospitalization rates uh, by different regions within New Haven County. And the dark brown reflects New Haven, the city where we live and where we see patients they have significantly higher hospitalization rates. And on the right, we have, uh, we've kind of uh, zoned in on uh, the New Haven City and we can see that New Haven City is broken up into zip codes. And the zip code in the upper middle is New Hallville, which is, um, has the lowest life expectancy of all the other zip codes and significantly more so. So Dr. Numa, we've been you know, talking about the why, and I was hoping you could bring us through some of our conceptual framework for thinking about these disparities and how we might approach uh, solving them. 
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Spatz. And I think that, you know, beyond, you know, looking at the different, you know, disparities, especially in cardiovascular outcomes, uh, trying to think a little bit through the why these disparities exist um, is an important exercise because it kind of sets us up to think about ways in which we can address some of these factors. You know, this um, model, the county health rankings model is one that I think is a, a great framework to try to examine the multiple factors that contribute to health disparities, um, as well as the relative contributions of some of these factors to the outcomes that we see. So starting, you know, all the way from the physical environment, uh, which includes things like, you know, air and water quality, air pollution, access that people have to transportation and housing is an important determinant, you know, of these um, disparities. Next, we can look at, you know, social and economic factors. And these include things like income. Uh, we see a lot of these disparities sort of worse in lower income. Um, uh, also includes things like education and specifically health literacy uh, within education. It includes employment. It includes amounts of family and social support that are available to individuals, as well as community safety and the ability of individuals to move around freely in their communities without fear. When we bring this closer to some of the factors that we deal with in clinical care, then the access to care and the quality of the care that people have is a really critical determinant in terms of you know, these outcomes and health disparities. So how knowledgeable is the care team? What are their communication skills? How aware are they of these disparities like the ones you've described um, in these communities? And what is their level of trustworthiness within the community? Finally, I think it's important uh, to look at the individual level of you know, patients or people in the community and the health behaviors. Uh, so thinking about especially some of those health behaviors that really affect uh, cardiovascular risk factors like hypertension and cardiovascular outcomes themselves. So thinking about things like tobacco use, um, alcohol and drug use, diet and exercise. And in here as well, I'd sort of, you know, put in things like, um, you know, interpersonal racism, you know, structural racism, which can go through um, any of these factors that we see here. Um, I think as we think about these factors and look at this framework, um, it's probably important to know that you know, these factors do not exist in a vacuum, but sort of there's a complex interplay uh, between these factors and how they affect health disparities. Uh, for instance, um, you know, a person who lives in, in an environment that is unsafe and in a food desert will probably have quite a bit of trouble in terms of meeting diet and exercise goals. So given this, um, I think that, you know, the really important discussion here, Dr. Spatz, beyond the problem and why the problem exists is what is it that we need or can do uh, to foster health equity in cardiovascular disease care. There too, to simplify things, I think that there are interventions at two levels, at the system level, as well as individualized approaches that can integrate these different contextual factors uh, to address health disparities. And some of these factors, um, you know, starting from the system level include, you know, policies and programs, you know, that can address structural racism, policies and programs that can also address and improve access to healthcare and, you know, access to quality healthcare, as well as other policies and programs that can continue to study, um, you know, this issue and make it a priority. Um, the other things that, you know, we can put in this bucket, again, in this kind of system or structure, structural level, which includes, you know, these policies to address economic education and, you know, sort of the community deprivation that leads to some of the disparities that we've talked about. And this can include, again, um, you know, education and being sort of very mindful and targeted in terms of some of these interventions. Uh, finally, all other things that we can think about, um, high quality healthcare, as well as in, on the individual level, 
you know, personalized healthy lifestyle goals, uh, you know, for patients, things like, you know, self-management, medication adherence, patient, patient education, behavioral counseling, as well as including family and community members in the cascade, I think are some of the, you know, key interventions at all these different levels that we can start to look at in terms of addressing um, health disparities and fostering health equity. One of the things I'm so excited about in our preventive cardiovascular health program at Yale through the Heart and Vascular Center is really the opportunity to work with communities and populations so that we can forge those relationships and learn from our colleagues and experts in community health um, and really forge together programs that meet the needs of the populations that we're trying to serve. I think we come up with the most um, innovative and novel and really um, meaningful interventions when we do this together with a diverse team. And so I really look forward to working on these next steps with you, Dr. Onuma, and with our New Haven community. I also really will look forward to partnering with patients. I mean, this is, I think, the essence of the care that we try to provide day in and day out with our patients. It's really to develop those um, trusting and intimate relationships so that we can understand the details of our patients' lives. So many of the things that you pointed out, Dr. Onuma, about, um, about patients' communities, about the uh, safety and uh, well-being of their communities as well as themselves. Uh, during this COVID pandemic, we know that, that there is community grieving happening where entire communities are devastated uh, by members of their community getting sick or dying from COVID, uh, by the high unemployment rates, by access to care, access to food. And so we have entire communities who are suffering. And I think this is a, just a, such an important time for us to reach out to those communities, to partner with them, to start to have conversations on how we can improve um, their lifestyle behaviors, their cardiovascular health, their total well being, and again, develop interventions that really meet the needs of people where they're at. So I look forward to being on this journey with you, Dr. Anuma. I'm so glad we got a chance to um, talk about some of this. Uh, uh, challenge that we face as a medical community as well as a society, and I look forward to uh, doing some more good work together. Thank you very much, Dr. Spatz.